If you've ever been blue water boat shopping, you've undoubtedly run across an array of different fiberglass sailboats from the Benz and Jens to the full keel monsters like Island Packet, the fancy pants boats like Swan and stuff like that. But you've also likely run across the occasional sailboat that looks a bit different. Something with sharper edges and flatter surfaces. Every once in a while you come across something that's not made of fiberglass at all. This week on Everything You Need to Know, we're talking about steel sailboats. Steel, you might be thinking, that doesn't even float, and inherently no, it doesn't, but in the shape of a hull, just about anything will actually float. They make boats out of cement. More on that in a different episode. But why would you want a boat made out of something that doesn't inherently float? In one word, strength. A steel hulled boat is so insanely strong as compared to our fiberglass counterparts that we all seem to have. It takes 30,000 pounds of pressure per square inch to deform this steel. So if you run it up onto some rocks or get into rubbing up against another boat during a really tight race, you're more than likely to win the lottery than you are to actually damage your hull in any sort of meaningful way. Steel is also a material which is orthotropic, which means it maintains its strength in any direction that force is actually applied to it. If you took a circle of steel from a sailboat hull that's made out of steel, you couldn't bend it or rip it or tear it down the middle. It doesn't matter what you try to do, the strength is always there, as opposed to fiberglass, which is isotropic, meaning its strength is in sort of one direction. But more often than not, because of the run of the fibers through the resin, that's true. And because you can rip fiberglass down the weaker sort of axis, it doesn't mean it's actually a bad material. Boat builders know this and they weave the fiberglass to make sure the strength is where it needs to be. To give you a practical idea on the strength of a steel hull in a sailboat, oftentimes on a steel sailboat, pointing hard to windward and a really good breeze, the leeward shrouds won't even become loose and like wobble around everywhere like our shrouds do because the hull is so strong it absorbs the forces of the wind that are put on the mast. So the leeward shrouds typically they just stay tight. And when you think about the inside of our fiberglass hulls with all the framework and bulkheads, modern steel hulls don't even need any framework and in most cases they don't even have bulkheads meaning your interior layout isn't dictated by the typical bulkheads that we're used to on fiberglass. You have the companionway bulkhead and then the bulkhead up in front of the mast. They dictate the layout of our boats on almost every fiberglass boat ever made. They're all about the same because of those two bulkheads adding strength. Steel boats don't need those. Okay, so we know it's way stronger than glass, but that comes at a cost and probably in weight, right? Well, this might actually surprise you, but the answer is often no. Steel, when built properly, is often lighter than heavier glass boats. Most 40 plus foot steel sailboats operate in a class of medium to medium heavy displacement, right about there with their fiberglass counterparts. And the whole point of a steel boat tends to be world cruising to far flung destinations where honestly, weight kinda stops mattering and hear me out here, a long term live aboard cruiser, regardless of what it's made of, is going to be so loaded down with spare parts and equipment that weight stops really being a concern unless you're on a catamaran or something. Lady K is actually about 3,000 pounds heavier than her listed weight from the time when she went from a weekend racer to a cruiser, just adding the solar panels and the extra water and the spare parts, extra water pump, extra alternator, the weight adds up and Probably, I, I think it was about 3,000 pounds or 3,200 pounds crane weight when I was done modifying the boat. On the weight subject, however, with steel boats, building the deck of the boat and the superstructure, the coach top, out of steel, it can be done, but often it isn't. Just the hull is steel. Everything deck level and above tends to be plywood with fiberglass sandwich, the normal way of doing things to sort of keep the weight down and especially keep the high up weight down because in a sailboat you want all the weight to be as far down as possible, minimal weight on the high side. So they tend to do the coach top and the deck 
regular way. So you get all this added strength. You can bounce it off the coral reef and the whole boat is just fine with that. You can get T-boned up against a dock and the whole boat is fine with that. What is the cost of all of this? And you might already be thinking there are some issues with sailing a steel boat through especially salt water, key amongst which is rust and corrosion. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make this whole channel possible, really. I want to thank this week's newest patrons. We have Carrie, John, and Sam. Thank you guys so much for making this possible. So rust is a cancer on anything metal. Anybody who lives in the snow belt where we use salt on the roads and drives a car made out of metal, you know what I'm talking about. And it's especially bad on a steel sailboat. But the problem isn't as bad as you might actually think it is. We've gotten so good at chemically treating steel and coating it that if it's done right and you inspect the boat at regular intervals, the rust really becomes a non-issue. There are a lot of options too to treat steel, but probably the most popular is an epoxy paint job, epoxy coating. The problem is you don't just do one or two coats like you do on our boats. You do sometimes as many as 10 coats. So the epoxy paint gets pretty thick and pretty expensive. So the price is much higher in high-end epoxy, which you're going to use to protect your high-end steel boat, but a solid high-quality coating of epoxy paint or whatever you're using to protect your steel boat will almost entirely eliminate the rust issue and it will last for a really, really long time because it's so thick and it's all bonded together. It's kind of exactly what you want if you're going to be out cruising the world for decades and not just a couple years. Being an electronics sort of guy and Lady K being so heavily outfitted with different electronics, corrosion and electrolysis are a big deal for me. And in a steel boat, a lot of care has to be taken to avoid these things, avoiding dissimilar metals. That's a big job, but it's a job usually done when the boat is being built. So you need to find a steel sailboat that was built properly. And the use of sacrificial metals like anodes, they should be all over the place. The keel, the hull, the prop shaft, the rudder, anywhere you can stick a sacrificial zinc on there is going to be in your best interest. And zinc is usually what is used because it will be eaten away faster than the steel hull of the boat. So everything will attack the zinc and leave the hull largely unscathed. On a similar note, the entire electrical system inside the boat, DC, AC, all of it, needs extreme care. So it's isolated from the hull itself. As soon as you start grounding to the hull or something, you're throwing stray currents out there into the salt water, which is extremely conductive and is going to cause a lot of problems. The corrosion and electrolysis factors devalue most of these older steel boats because there's just no way to know what condition the steel is in from those things if it wasn't done properly unless you can get in and inspect every panel from the inside and out which is often very difficult to do in a steel hulled sailboat. You're going to have to rip up floorboards, you're going to have to check every weld and every joint. And finally we arrive at cost. A boat professionally built from steel is going to be more expensive than a boat built from fiberglass, which is for a few good reasons. Steel boat builders have gotten so good at building steel boats that they almost last forever. But there is another option. More and more amateur home builders are turning to steel now. With some research, some practice, some good welding and cutting equipment, a steel boat can be built at home fairly cheap, sometimes cheaper than glass. You can find plans all over the internet for less than two grand for a Bruce Roberts or something like that for a steel design. And you can get started with very minimal metal work experience as long as you can run a good weld and you know how to handle steel properly. It might actually be easier for you to build one of these things than it would be to do a fiberglass wood framed sort of a deal. Which sort of brings us to the point of this episode. If you wanted to truly go anywhere, steel becomes the obvious way to go. If your trip will have you hitting ice or icebergs or taking completely uncharted rivers in volcanic sort of coral where you're bound to hit bottom and it's going to be hard, steel is going to be significantly safer. The added expense becomes worth it at that rate. The look of a steel boat, though, is usually different. 
Because of the way steel is used to build boats, it will often be made out of panels, so there'll be noticeable chines where the panels meet at different angles. Some people are fine with that look, uh, some people think it looks terrible. It's personal preference, obviously. Now, boat builders have gotten really good at this, getting rid of the chines. They're starting to build steel hulls with curves. So they become so incredibly well done that you'd have to bring a magnet to the boatyard to actually discern between the fiberglass hulls and the steel hulls. They really have gotten that exceptional at building these things. So some personal thoughts on these boats. My plans have always been tropical and they likely always will be tropical. And I was really concerned about steel hulls and how hot they might get in the Caribbean with the sun beating down on them that close to the equator. And in all my research, I found that's actually not the case. Apparently, a steel hull is typically insulated with an inch or an inch and a half of closed cell foam or spray foam, making it actually run a lot cooler in the cabin than its fiberglass counterparts, which is really interesting because believe me, when you're down there, the cabin gets very toasty midday when you're sailing through the islands. Another big concern for me personally is the upkeep of the steel. I know how to take care of fiberglass. If there's a scratch or a gouge or a hole that needs filling, I've got my jug of epoxy, my jug of hardener, my thing of thickener. I've got everything I need. Is steel just sort of the rich man's adventure yacht that needs a team of people to see to the upkeep and maintain it? The surprising answer I found is usually no. If it's set up right, if the boat is built right and isolated from corrosion and electrolysis and rust, it's actually, in a lot of cases, easier to maintain than fiberglass. I think the big thing for me is going to be the upfront cost for a good first well-made, well-manufactured steel boat, but also well-maintained. It is going to be a steep cost to also outfit it. I want to probably strip off the epoxy coating and redo inches of epoxy, which is going to be prohibitively expensive as a startup cruiser. The last consideration I think I have is, while I can weld to varying degrees, carrying a sufficient welder and powering it it seems difficult. That's not to say you need to carry a welder because you really don't. Anywhere you go cruising, if there's sort of a metal defect that you need to handle, pretty much any country is going to have a guy in it that will weld steel quite well for a very, very low amount of pesos or whatever the currency is wherever you are. I just happen to be more of a do-it-yourself type of sailor, so I'm going to have a welder on board if I have a steel sailboat. And whether that's to make minor repairs or many many modifications as I go along uh, it does seem like a great idea to have a welder also the ability to weld both stainless and regular steel is invaluable as you go cruising because wherever you are in the world any anchorage you happen to be in someone else there will need some welding done typically on stainless so you might as well bring one so would I buy a steel sailboat Sure, I mean, I see no reason not to, provided it's in good shape and well-maintained. Uh, it should be noted also that Delos has mentioned multiple times in the past about looking into a steel adventure boat and making that sort of the next Delos. And I think for them, it makes a lot of sense. They are truly world cruisers. They do tend to hit bottom from time to time. They're going to uncharted places. Steel, it, it would be perfect for those guys. For me, for right now, I think fiberglass just makes more sense. I have the skill set to maintain it and repair it. I know how to look for osmosis. I can fix it if I need to on the fly. I carry enough uh, epoxy and hardener and th thickener and all the tools needed. I, I think it, fiberglass is just better for what I'm going to do. And if you're just sailing the tropics, I think, why not? That's it for this week, guys. If you like this video, please don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. And I will see you guys next week. Thank mm -hmm. you.